guys, it's Katina with Atomica Nuclei Tin Jewelry, and today we're going to be experimenting with alcohol inks on tin. So I've done a little bit of this in the past, but today we're going to use a blending solution, and so that's going to be an experiment for both of us because I've never done that before. We'll just see how it works. All right, so um, we'll be using alcohol inks, and I use Ranger Adirondack inks. That's the only alcohol ink that I've really ever used to just apply it on metal. Um, I know that there's other brands out there. You can experiment th with them all you want. Later on, we're going to use the Spectrum Nor markers. They're alcohol ink markers. And we're going to um, try those out on some tin as well. So I have, I have used those. Um, so I have cut out some shapes here. I have some teardrop shapes. It's going to be earrings and a pendant. So I used the Sizzix Movers and Shapers teardrop design to cut out these earrings and then I um, hand cut this shape. Um, I made a template and I cut out this teardrop shape to kind of correspond. I wanted something kind of large. And then um, I, after I had them cut out, I sanded them, sanded the edges with 400 grit sandpaper, and then I went ahead and poked my holes in there. It's easier, especially with, if you're gonna emboss um, the tin, to go ahead and get your holes poked in there beforehand. Okay, and so on this design, I used a um, embossing um, plate from Sizzix. This is uh, Mosaic Gems. And so it's like a, one of those 3D impression stamps. And then for these earrings, I, I again used a large circle um, from the Movers and Shapers by Sizzix. So this is a large circle. And then for this one, um, the embossing folder I used was a cuddle bug. It's, it's an Anna Griffin design and it's called Juliet Lace. Okay, so again, I cut the shape out, I sanded the shape, I poked my holes, and then I embossed it. Now, after you get all that done, you'll wanna be sure and, and clean them real well because when we apply the alcohol inks, we don't want any dirt or anything on there. And so I generally use a wet wipe. You can use soap and water, but I use one of those wet ones with some alcohol in it, and I, I'll rub these down real good, and so, they won't have any residue on them when we apply the ink. Okay, another thing I have is um, some felt squares. You can use the fancy Ranger dauber with the squares that you buy or the circles that you buy, but I just cut up some felt and use it. And then I was having some hard time finding the Ranger alcohol ink blending solution. And so, I got online and I was like, is there any alternative that you can use? And yes. So there's several posts and videos that you can find on the internet about the DIY blending solution that you can make yourself. So this here is um, some 91% alcohol and it's three ounces of that. And then you mix three drops of this glycerin in there and you can get both of these at like CVS or Walgreens and that you can probably get both of them for around ten dollars um, and then you know it's gonna last you forever evidently there's more things that you can do with the glycerin than what people realize okay so anyway I put three ounces in here I put three drops of the glycerin I shook it up and we're gonna see how how well this works as a blending solution um, in my previous adventures in alcohol ink on tin, I didn't use any blending solution. I just kind of put the ink on and let it go where it wanted to and then dabbed where um, I thought it needed dabbed and called it good. Okay, so let's get started here. Let's do, we'll do these first. And I like to put lots of different colors on. Okay. And so we'll try these with the blending solution. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. Whoops, that was a lot. So let's take some of this and put it over here. So Probably need something with a dropper, but I didn't have anything. 
Okay, so we've got some blending solution on there and I'm gonna get a little paintbrush just in case we need it. And then let's start with some good colors. Let's put some purple on here. And since these are gonna be earrings, I'll try to kind of put it in the same places. I could, I guess, mirror, but I don't know if I wanna do that. Okay, so let's put some pink by the purple. And I'm just gonna put these right on here. I know people put the inks on the felt first. Mm, we're gonna, we'll use the felt, but I'm gonna do this way first, cause this is kind of fun too. Let's see here, and let's get some blue. I guess I should have kind of opened these before I... Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's take some of this and dab it around. That blending solution kind of makes it lighter. It kind of seems like... Let's do this one. getting there. You can kind of see how those alcohol inks are reacting. I kind of wanted to be a brighter. Let's see here. We'll just keep going till we like it. And let's put some more blue. I don't know what some of these colors are. I've had them for a while. And if you don't get those lids on there, sometimes they kind of spill out. Oh, that's pretty cool. Kind of like that. That's kind of a jewel tone. Let's see if we can get this one kind of the same. Oh, that looks pretty neat. Like that? I do, I do. We'll have to get this bottom part here. Okay. I like it when it looks, oh yeah. Those are pretty nifty. All right, so it's, we'll set these up here to dry. And then let's pull these down. Okay, eh, throw that one away. All right, so on these, I'm not gonna use the blending solution. We'll just see how, we'll just see how it goes when you don't use the blending solution. And that one's pretty big, so we'll put a couple drops on there. Let's use some pink. Put that there, 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 there we go. And let's see, I don't think I've used any yellow. Hmm, I think I do want to use this yellow. Maybe I did. Okay, let's see what we do here. Me and my kind of unorthodox ways here. That's 
kind of subtle, but that is cool. Okay. I don't want to take it off of it. Those are pretty nifty. I like the way those are turning out. Let's put some more on. Let's put some more on. And like I said, I'm probably not doing this the way it's supposed to be done, but I'm doing it a fun way. Just apply it and see what happens. There we go. That one. Oh yeah, I want some more of this. Where'd that go? This color maybe turquoise-ish. I like the way when you just put the ink on and it kind of smears all the rest of them out, you know, kind of expands them all. I, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. It's pretty cool. All right, folks. That's coming along pretty good. I like this red, though. I think this one needs a little bit more red in places. Maybe some places look right there. Okay, let's see here. And if you notice, I am working on a um, piece of tile. Um, this is from my Paul and Merclay days. It helps to protect your work surface because these alcohol inks, they'll, they'll stain. And I've stained some pretty hand towels. I like to use pretty hand towels behind my behind my work, and sometimes they get all stained when I don't have something down to for my alcohol inks. All right, so we've got this guy here. Oh, I like him. Hopefully, you can see how pretty these colors are on here. And then I got the earrings. And I like them too. Mm -hmm. Those are fabulous. Okay, so let's put these guys aside to dry because we're, we're gonna have to probably clean up the backs on them too. All right, so to clean up, <clears throat> I just take one of my little squares and I put some alcohol on it and you can, you can clean it up if I had a bigger little pad of, I could clean that up a little bit better. tend to always have it a towel in my lap all right so we've seen that you can just apply the alcohol ink straight onto your piece and it'll make some cool designs and I I really do like those that's cool but look we're gonna have to clean up that back we'll wait for that to dry and then I'll sh we'll clean up the backs and here are these two that are about dry. We're gonna do something else to these. Make these look pretty cool. I think I like these the way they are. Okay, so the other thing you can do is that you can, you can stamp on tin. So when I, when I stamp on tin, I usually put a foundation down. And if and this is just a, the bottom of a tin, actually. It's just a gold bottom plain bottom piece of a tin canister that I cut out um, and then what I do when I when I want to stamp and paint on it is I take some of this Vintage gloss and, and you can usually use it with the Vintage patinas but I will put a thin layer of that down and then I'll take my um, stays on ink and my stamp of choice and today I just used a little bird and then this is black stays on ink and I will stamp on top of my tin and let that dry and then I'll generally take and put another layer of this glaze on top because I want to seal in the image so when I use my alcohol ink pins on or markers on there you can still see the design on the back. 
So we're going to paint, we're just going to use some gray on him, gray and brown. So it's just like coloring in markers. So you can fade them in and color it in the way, you know, whatever colors you want. So I'm going to use gray and brown on this guy. So make his little beak brown, make his legs brown. And then we'll just just kind of color him up. You kind of get the idea. You could color him any color you want to. I mean, he's your bird. You can make him pink and purple if you want. We'll color him up here. Now, you can use a blending pen. So, these Spectrum, you can, you can use, they do have a, a blending pen here. I don't know if this one is going to work real great. Let's see here. Yeah, you can blend it a little bit. I've used these a couple times. It looks like it took some of that ink off there that we'd put on there before. I'm gonna put that back. Maybe I just like it with my my regular ink. I used to use these alcohol markers on polymer clay. They're really nice for polymer clay, but I found out you can use them on tin as well. So you could color this guy up any any way you wanted to and make him, make him pretty. Don't, don't judge me by my coloring skills here. All right, so <clears throat> when this is dry, I'll spray this um, two times with some crystal clear enamel. And this is what I use, and I'll, I'll put a couple of coats on this. Um, and then either before or after, usually I cut out a shape my shape before I spray it, you know, and finish it off. Um, now, a lot of times, today I just used a scrap piece of tin, but a lot of times you could go ahead and cut out your shape and then um, stamp it right then after you have it like finished up. So you could just sand it afterwards. Okay, so what we're gonna do on this guy is that we're gonna sand him just a little bit. Is we're gonna hit him with some Gilder's paste. All right, so this is 400 grit sandpaper. No, it, this is 400 grit sandpaper. No, it doesn't always come, it doesn't come in shapes like this. It comes in larger pieces and then I cut it down to size. So we're just gonna lightly sand away some of these high points because I want to put some Gilder's paste on here and the gilder's paste needs something good to stick to. So just the high points, it's a light sanding. It's not like I'm pressing real hard. I'm just kind of trying to get the high points that ink lifted off of there. And so when I put on the gilder's paste, the gilder's paste will, will stick, no problemo. Now, I haven't put a layer of the Vintage stuff on like these, these um, before I put alcohol ink on there, just because I find I have I have 
not found that um, there's an issue. Okay, let's see here, we got that pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna wipe these off with my towel. Make sure I get all the sanding gook off, okay? Now, we're gonna take these and I'm gonna take some, let's see, I think I'll take black. We'll take black first. Okay, so this is just Gilder's paste, um, just paste wax, and it'll dry on here. And with Gilder's paste, you can use um, multiple colors and layer them if, if that's the effect that you're going for. So I'm just hitting the highlights here where we've sanded away, making it that black stand out. I hope you can see this on the screen, how it's kind of getting black. And you can layer this up as much as you want until you achieve the look that you're going for. There we go. It's filling in now. Because I want those to be black. I want that to kind of stand out. That's just me. I just, I like to do different things. Okay. Now, you could also have, we could have also used silver on this, silver gilder's paste. That would have been really cool. Sometimes I have to check my camera to make sure you guys can still see what I'm doing. All right, so once you have the Gilder's paste on there like you like, how you want it, and now that I see that, I think the silver would be so cool. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit it with some silver now. So, silver. My fingers are getting really messy. I'll use this finger. Oh, look what that did. That's beautimous. Look, see, when I say that you can layer the colors and do different things, I ain't joking. Gilder's paste is pretty sweet. Okay, so when, the, when it dries, you'll want to buff it. There you go. Oh, I like those. Look at that. Not too bad. Not too bad for a piece of plain gold tin. And this was a bottom too, this was a bottom. Okay, bottom of a tin, I mean. Okay, so we got those put away and I think I'm gonna have to clean my hands just a smidge here. Okay, so we've got those done and I got a wet wipe here, cleaning my fingers. And we're gonna have to clean up the backs here so I'll put my little thing in clean this up just a little bit. See this, these wet ones that you can buy? They'll clean too. Not as great as the 91% alcohol. That stuff's just great to have on your workbench. It cleans up all kinds of stuff. Okay, so here we've got this. Oh, look at these. Look at these guys since we've set. They've kind of melded into something different. Oh, I like them. I like them. These, I am not gonna sand. I'm not gonna do or sand and put any um, patina on. I like them the way they are. So, these guys are done. 
All I'm going to do is spray them with two coats of the clear enamel. Okay, now we got to talk about the back sides. The back sides of the pieces because they need cleaned up. You don't want to sell any of the <laughs> any pieces with some messy backs. So you just take some alcohol on either a Q, you can use a Q-tip or like I'm just using another piece of, of felt and just rub it over the backs and it'll take off, it'll take off that, that alcohol ink that you don't want and then be sure not to, be sure not to put it down. There we go, see? It's like an eraser. You just don't want to put it back down where there's wet alcohol ink sitting there. All right. See, it's all squeaky clean. When my nanny was teaching me how to sew when I was a teenager, she would always say, your back has to be just as beautiful as the front. So, there are those. Okay, so I got one more piece left. And on this one, we are going to use, let's see, we'll put some of this, we'll use some of our um, solution on this. Woo! There's a ton of that. All right. Yeah, I think I recommend you using a dropper. All right, so now we've got the alcohol solution on there. Let's just do it like we did before. I want drop here, here, and Okay, that's not too bad. I kind of like that. Just something kind of subtle because I want a stamp on top of it and I want the stamp to show up. Okay. So, we'll let this dry. All right, so we're gonna take our stays on ink pad and get this a good, good smashing. Make sure you got your layer on there good. All right. So we're inked up. I'm just gonna put it down here, press, and oh, there it is. There's our design, which it could be a little bit darker, but that's okay. It's subtle. So I could go in here and take any of my design pieces so I have a 
couple templates here. So if I wanted to come in and get like a corner and cut that part out, that could be an earring or come over here and get another piece out. So you can, you can stamp on top of the ink is what I was getting at. With your stays on. Okay, so I hope you guys found this video interesting and that you play with alcohol inks and figure out what works best for you. Um, I will have pictures of these finished products at the end of this video. Um, and maybe next month I'll come up with another video. Okay, so we're back, and this is the finished products of what we did today in playing with alcohol ink. Um, there are these earrings here. That These are the ones that we just applied the alcohol ink directly on the tin and then kind of blended it together a little bit. They're finished off with check glass beads on copper wire and then I make my own ear wires out of niobium. And so here's the pendant that we made and it is just on a copper bale with check glass beads on a leather cord finished into a short necklace. This necklace is about like an 18 inch necklace. So there you see that. And then here are the earrings that we used um, Gilder's paste with. And well, first we used the blending solution and then the Gilder's paste. So we put the blending solution on there and then the alcohol inks. You can see the red and the purple and the blue all blended so beautifully. And then we sand away the embossed part and then put some black and silver Gilder's paste on there and then sprayed them. I've sprayed all of them twice with clear enamel. So again, and these are finished off with check glass beads, copper wire, and handmade niobium wires. Okay, so then we used the stamp. So we alcohol inked um, some plain tin and then we put a stamp on it. And so here are a pair that came with that. So, and these I put just a little bit more color on. This was the purple side. So there you can see the stamp behind there. And again, it's check glass beads, copper wire, niobium ear wires. And then here's the last pair, the last pair that we did with the stamping. Okay, again, there you can see the stamping there. You can see the alcohol inks that we used and check glass beads, copper wire, and niobium ear wires. So if you're ever interested and wanna see what I'm creating lately, then you can check out my Facebook page. It's Atomica Nuclei, and you can see everything I have to sell. So I sell directly from my Facebook page. And um, I also have a blog, uh, Atomica Nuclei by Katina on Blogspot. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Katina or at Atomica Nuclei. So I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you find some alcohol inks and give it a go on some tin and see how you like it. Um, Y'all have a great week and hopefully for next month I'll have another video. 